Hey there, and happy spooky season, everyone. Now, I've been working on a video for the last week and a half. I've actually spent the last three days trying to meticulously edit and trim down these parts that are being deemed copyrighted. So, yeah, the video's been done for a few days, and then literally the last few days, I've just been trying to get around the copyright, which is not happening, so... <laughs> Uh, scrapping the first video, not the premise of it, but I had to restart from scratch. Um, so I do appreciate you guys' patience. Spooky Season series is happening. It's definitely going to extend past October uh, since we are late here. I do have another video in the works for you guys aside from this one. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. So I've decided to embrace Spooky Month by sharing with you my absolute favorite moments in horror history by breaking down movies or shows I consider iconic. I'm not ranking them in orders, I really think it's subjective and entirely based on my perspective. I plan on releasing many videos in this series and will extend past October. If you guys really enjoy this series, then maybe I'll keep it as a year-long project mixed in with my other content. For many, clowns already bring a flood of terror into the mind as it is a very common phobia. Allow me to make that phobia much, much worse by introducing our friendly neighborhood art the clown. Terrifier, a 2016 independent horror film directed by Damien Leone, has achieved cult classic status through a perfect storm of elements that sent shockwaves through the horror community. Featuring the nightmarish and unforgettable killer, Art the Clown, the film offers a relentless and gruesome descent into terror. With its low budget, independent origins, and a penchant for unapologetically graphic violence, Terrifier defied expectations, spreading its macabre influence far beyond its modest beginnings. In this exploration, we delve into the eerie and unsettling journey of how Terrifier clawed its way from obscurity to become a celebrated cult classic in the annals of horror history. So let's go ahead and cover all the impactful moments from what we've seen so far from Terrifier and find out what really made it revitalize the slasher horror genre as we know it. I plan on covering Terrifier 2 in a separate video as we have way more to expand upon with the sequel. The film opens with a woman who is a guest on a talk show. Her face is incredibly disfigured as we learn she's on the show to talk about her being the sole survivor of a series of murders committed by Art the Clown. And when I say disfigured, I mean disfigured. Like, this woman's face looks like an eldritch terror or some Lovecraftian creature. I'm sorry, but damn. We then see what appears to be a figure wearing a clown jumpsuit in front of the TV, playing the interview with his victim as he begins to prepare once again to embark on a raid of terror. He suits up, tiny top hat included, and grabs his tools for destruction. We end the scene by getting a behind the scenes shot of the talk show host as she is talking about the interview and saying some pretty insensitive things about the disfigured woman. We then see that the woman is hiding in the host dressing room and in a quick gruesome attack begins tearing into the talk show host's face, rendering her just as disfigured, if not more so. How poetic. We follow Dawn and Tara on Halloween night as they are on the way home from a party. They decide to stop at a pizza parlor and grab a bite before heading home. Honestly, they should have just got delivery, but that's neither here nor there. The girls are seated and order their pizza as another customer comes in the shop. The girls then notice that the new customer is wearing a really creepy Halloween costume. Tara is immediately uncomfortable by not only his costume, but by his deadpan stare as it's clear that this creep is attracted to Tara. The strange man is Art the Clown, and the girls have no idea what they're in for. They begin to leave as the staff starts freaking out about a disturbing mess left in the bathroom by our favorite clown. The girls are gone now, and we're in the parlor alone with two employees and Art. We've now arrived at the infamous pizza parlor scene. The scene in the pizza parlor is one of the film's most iconic moments. Art the Clown's sudden and brutal attack on the pizza parlor staff is shocking and gruesome setting the stage for the intense violence that follows. This initial encounter with the antagonist immediately grabs the audience's attention, setting the tone for his eerie and silent presence. The fact that he's able to translate his terrifying personality without ever uttering one single word is what really captured my attention as a first-time viewer. I was captivated by the fact that I was witnessing something so grotesque and vicious without a motive in sight, much less than a word uttered from the killer's mouth. I was so impressed by how I was made to feel isolated as a viewer. 
I was made to feel so uncomfortable by not knowing why these atrocities were happening. There's no closure, no justifications, just pure chaos and death from the start, and we have no idea why it's happening as the audience. We leave the pizza parlor, and we see Don and Tara find their car with a flat tire. Being stranded in the middle of our dodgy looking town, Tara really has to pee, and does not feel comfortable popping a squat in the middle of the road or down a creepy alleyway after the encounter with Art. So she goes to a rundown apartment building where a janitor is taking a smoke break outside. Tara goes inside to use the restroom as Don is hanging out in the car waiting for Tara as she waits for Tara's sister Samantha to arrive to give them a ride back home. Her sister is studying for a test but after her drunk roommate walks in and begins getting down with a guy after making direct eye contact with Samantha, even acknowledging that she didn't see her there but still continues to slap ham with the guy. We then pan back to Tara who just had a creepy encounter with the lady holding her baby which is just a baby doll. Terry begins to make her way outside the apartment when we get our first sincere shot of Terry. Art's standing there in a very animated pose with eyes stretched wide and a devilish grin on his face. Terry knows she's in the presence of genuine evil and begins to run away after slamming a door on Art. After a very short-lived chase sequence taking part in a parking garage, we see Terry do her best to strategize and escape from Art. We see here that our friendly clown is not interested in a quick kill as he simply knocks Tara unconscious. As she wakes, it's revealed that Art took the time to run to the SUV, while Tara is knocked out and manages to grab Dawn, also holding her captive. Moving forward on this toxic train of horror, we see the deranged woman from earlier, yeah, the same woman who was holding the fake baby, trying to plead with the janitor to convince him that there's a man downstairs who is slaughtering the others in the building one by one. The janitor quickly dismisses the deranged woman, leading to a violent ambush with a hammer accompanied by deranged laughter. The janitor is no longer with us as Art the Clown has taken a new victim. At this point in the film, we're deprived of any sense of hope as there's just nothing standing in the way of the unhinged clown and Tara, aside from running down a few hallways and attempts at locating an exit while keeping herself hidden from Art. Art is hot on Tara's trail, and at this point, he's just really toying with his food before tearing into the main course. The haunting sound effects and score used in the movie really sends this chase into a crescendo of fear and anticipation as we really have no idea how our final girl is going to escape the treacherous grasp of Artie. After a quick game of cat and mouse, Art eventually closes in on Tara, leading to a close encounter where Tara is able to get a quick stab off on Art with a scalpel that he'd previously dropped. This buys her some time to get out of the parking garage and into the building. And just as our wings of hope begin to spread, they're quickly shot down as the doors leaving the garage are locked. She's able to cleverly get Art off her trail by throwing a mousetrap to deceive Art of the exact location. However, in one fell sweep, Art comes from behind, grabs Tara, and injects a needle to her neck, rendering her unconscious. Now, we have both victims incapacitated, and this is where the building tension begins to crescendo in such a surreal and intense way. Tara, tied to her chair, is then brought to a more surreal reality as Art takes a sheet off of the figure that he's standing next to, revealing it to be Dawn, hanging upside down, also tied up. We have arrived to the infamous shot of the film, a shot that reminds us that we're in the middle of a really fucked up shit show, the hacksaw scene. A particularly disturbing moment involves Art the Clown torturing a victim with a hacksaw. The graphic and unsettling nature of the scene left a strong impression on viewers, solidifying the film's reputation for extreme violence. A hacksaw is not new to the genre by any means, and I think the series Saw is way more known for its symbolism behind the hacksaw. But the way that Art violently and effortlessly splits his victims in half while hanging upside down left an image in many of our heads of true, torturous terror. We're finally given a small dose of relief as we see Tara's sister, Samantha, in the car, now on the way to pick up Tara and get her to safety. Samantha has no idea what she's in for. The film starts to crescendo, building towards a climax, showing a final showdown between the sole surviving protagonist as of now, Tara, and Art the Clown locked into a battle of athleticism and wit in the abandoned building. The intense and gruesome confrontation is a highlight of the film, 
leaving audiences on the edge of their seats. My ass was absolutely hanging off my seat, I can confirm. Terry gets some absolute banger shots to Artie's head with a board of wood and tries to get some finishing shots in. Now, I was very heated at the fact that Terry stabbed Art earlier in the shoulder, proceeding to run away, instead of at least getting one, like, fatal blow or an attempt to get that fatal blow in on him, but that's neither here nor there. Unfortunately, this mistake is the demise of Terra as Art goes full gangster and shoots her in the leg, incapacitating her. Art is a lot smarter than Terra. Instead of further toying with his food, Art realizes that Terra is an actual risk to his life, so he decides to pop her in the head to ensure that she will not get back up. We then see a cleverly crafted text message sent from Art to Samantha, lowering Samantha down to the blood-drenched basement of the building. Sam walks in and sees with her own eyes what seems to be another nod to the Saw series, as Art is on a small tricycle postured in the same way that Billy the Puppet from the Saw series is. This was so damn uncomfortable, but also made me laugh pretty damn sincerely. You can imagine not really having an idea of what you're walking into, and then boom, you see one of the most menacing, dare I say terrifying, sights in your life. But all the while, not one word is said by our antagonist. Protagonist? Honestly, Art's the GOAT in my opinion, so I might just be referring to him as a protagonist from here forward. He still manages to create a disturbing circus of horror with the setting he's created and the 